two for our nature art journal. Um, I hope you've all had a chance to pick up your journal and get started. I've started decorating mine and filling it in with some observations I've made. But now it's time to uh, talk about two specific techniques that I want to show you today that are kind of fun and not too difficult, but just something new to try and, and do when you're out there in nature or after you've experienced um, some outdoor time and maybe you come back inside like I have and then go ahead and work on it. So there's two things I want to talk about with you today. And that is a tree bark rubbing and watercolor leaf prints. Um, so this morning, I went on a walk through my woods and decided to look for some specimens that I can use to create these little mini artworks. Um, you can do them directly in your journal if you'd like, or you can use the pieces of watercolor paper that I gave you in your kit. Um, I think I'm going to use the watercolor paper today just because it's a little easier to work with loose sheets and then um, if I'd like to, I can later paste them or tape them into my journal. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to do a tree bark rubbing. Um, and this is pretty simple. It's kind of basically a technique you probably learned in grade school where you put an object under a piece of paper and you rub it. Um, it's kind of fun though to do it on trees. Uh, even if you're out walking and you find a really cool looking tree with a lot of texture, it's a neat way to make an impression or an image without damaging the tree. Now, please don't take bark or parts of a tree, um, you know, on property that isn't yours. Uh, I gathered my bark from trees that are already, you know, dead or decaying on my property. And so um, that's not an issue for me, but I have different examples. So here is, this is a piece of bark off of a white pine tree. So I have a lot of those. And I also have a piece of bark off of a maple tree. And this is a piece of bark with some moss on it from uh, an ash tree. You know, the emerald ash borer does get into things and unfortunately we lost some trees on our property due to that bug. But I got this cool piece of bark from it and with some moss on it. So that is a really interesting texture there. Um, but I also picked up a old black walnut. Um, this is not from this year where they're all still green and growing, but an older one that a squirrel did not get to. And I like the texture on it, so I might do a rubbing of that. So Tree bark rubbings are pretty simple. You just need a crayon or some charcoal, or you could even try markers, but I don't know how well that would work out. But I gave you a stick of charcoal, and I also gave you a crayon. You probably have other crayons too in your house somewhere, maybe. Um, but I'm going to peel the paper off my crayon just so that I can more easily do a rubbing. Um, and of course you want to decide what you want to rub. And I'm going to have to think about what do I want to rub first. But I'm going to take all the paper off my crayon here because using the side of the crayon will be much easier. Um, so I think I'm gonna do some with crayon and some with charcoal, see what turns out best. Uh, for... So just take a piece of paper and your bark. I'm gonna try the maple piece first because it's a little on the smaller side. And watercolor paper kind of has a texture to it. I think for this, it doesn't really matter what side I use first, but 
then you're just going to lay it on there and blah. Now this piece of bark is not as textured or flat as this piece, so we'll see what happens, but So that's kind of an intense dark blue, and it's because I was using the end of the crayon. But if I slide this down, and I do the side of the crayon, instead, see how it's much lighter? I get more of just the texture of the bark and not so much filling in. So really you need to experiment with what you want to do. And you could turn this into something really cool. Um, you no, know, maybe you do several pieces of bark on one sheet. Like let's try the white pine and see what that does to this sheet. You know, it's, and remember, bark is not completely flat, so it's going to be kind of a challenge to see what you get. I'm going to try this piece here of Ash Street because I think that's going to be some very interesting texture. I'm just slide my crayon all over. Like that. So it creates really a kind of cool background. Um, I kind of like it as maybe I would, you know, cut this out into a cool shape later and glue it into my journal and then write that today I went on a walk and I found these pieces of bark. Um, maybe I want to take another piece and I want to do just one sample of bark. You know, not, but how about I try the charcoal this time? Charcoal's a lot. Some would say more fancy, like a, But get that cool texture right there. Um, so really, that's all it is. A rubbing is a rubbing. You're taking something and you're applying a piece of paper to it and then rubbing something else onto it. I'm going to try doing this black walnut, which is probably going to be a little tricky because it's round. But... You can also do a stamp version. And so after you rub it on, you can just go ahead and stamp it right on there. So you create a stamp from the black walnut too. So you can really use either technique. I haven't rubbed a tree um, bark with a crayon or charcoal that's actually on a tree and then rubbed the paper on, pressed the paper on, but you get these really cool patterns to make some neat backgrounds and examples of texture for your journal. Um, another really neat thing to do is create a, uh, what's called a tree ring print. And so if you have a stump and you can see the growth rings in a tree, some people like to clean those up with a brush and then apply ink or paint to them. And then you lay your piece of paper down and you smooth it out with your hand or spoon even. And then you, when you peel it off slowly, you have an image of the tree rings. Um, and those are really pretty cool. You can get really large ones and make some neat artwork to hang on your wall. Some people go, you know, all out and even use a blowtorch to kind of like clean the stump up and make the rings really stand out. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out um, YouTube or Pinterest. There's lots of different videos and techniques on that. Um, but what we're doing today is much more simpler, just a simple um, 
bark rubbings. So now it's time to move on to our second technique for the day. And that is a <clears throat> watercolor leaf print. And it's really quite simple. You can do it two different ways and I will show you both. But you're gonna need a little glass of water, your watercolor paint set, and the paint set comes with a brush, but it isn't the nicest of brushes. So it did give you another brush, which is a little better. Yeah, this brush has some problems, so I'm gonna use my nicer brush. Um, and then some paper. Again, you can do it directly in your journal, but because you're working with watercolors, it's a little trickier. You wanna protect your other pages so they don't get wet. Um, so use like, you know, an extra scrap sheet underneath and whatnot um, to keep your journal safe. But when I went on my walk this morning, I, I also found some leaves and I found different ones. And so this is a grapevine leaf. You can see the cool vines and stuff. These are from a boysenberry tree. They're starting to get wilty because I, you know, picked them a while ago. And this is um, obviously maple leaves uh, when they're nice and green rather than the fall colors. And this is a, I'm pretty sure this is black walnut. Um, I think that's the tree I took it off of. Again, I'm not an expert in tree identification, something I should uh, work on. But to do a watercolor leaf print, um, like I said, there are two different ways. The first way I'm going to try is where you paint with the watercolors directly onto your leaf. So I'm going to take a boysenberry leaf here and you can see the veins in the leaf. And I really like how those look, um, gives it a really good texture. So on the back side, I'm gonna have the back of the leaf where most of the texture is upright facing me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decide what color I wanna try. And I think, I think I'm gonna try some red. So I'm gonna add some water drops to my red paint. Because that's how watercolors work. You have to get them wet. And I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit. Not gonna go too crazy, but I don't want really runny watercolor. I want it to be a little thicker. So not too many drops of paint, but enough to get it wet. And then I'm gonna go right ahead and I'm gonna paint, hopefully you can see this, but I'm going to paint directly on my leaf. So just gonna do it rather quickly. It's a good idea to have some kind of surface protecting your table or your workspace. But I'm doing a watercolor leaf print and I'm doing the method of directly on to my boysenberry tree leaf. And it's a little warm in here, so my paint is drying really fast. But again, I don't want it to be super wet, or super runny, because then it won't get as nice of a print. So once I feel like I've got the whole leaf covered really well there, I'm gonna take my watercolor paper with the textured side down onto the leaf. I'm just going to press it right on there and rub it gently and then flip it over and peel it off and there you go that's pretty cool looking I think so a fun way to make a greeting card and you got a nice print there of the boysenberry leaf. And maybe I want to do a second one right over the top. I think I'm gonna try some yellow. So get some drops of yellow paint here, add the water, stir it up and I have a new leaf. 
Get my yellow paint going there. And again, you just brush it. You could try the front side of the leaf, but really you're gonna get more veins and texture and pattern by using the back side where, where there's you know some spatial difference. But just go ahead, spread it all out, get more water if you need it. It's really a fun technique. I don't know how well the yellow is going to show up, but I want to see what it does over the top of the red. Get some orange in there. So I'm going to slightly off center it this time. Go ahead and press it on right over the top of my other one. Flip it over, peel it off. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So there you go. And I can let this dry and then I'll probably cut it out and, and write what type of leaf it is and when I found it and add it to my journal. So that's a pretty fun way to uh, make a leaf print. So the second technique for a watercolor leaf print is to take your watercolor paper and texture side up, lay it down, and then take your leaf. Um, I'm going to try this one and you want to place it on your paper, however you decide, and just lay it on there. Actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go upright like this. And then, make your paint. Then I'm gonna add water to my blue and my green. And instead of painting directly onto the leaf and then pressing it onto my paper, this one you're gonna paint a thicker edge of paint right on the edge of the leaf. You're kind of tracing your leaf. And so I'm just gonna, it's a little challenging. Some people actually tape their leaves down so that they don't move so much. So I am going right on the leaf, but I'm going on the edge. And I'm doing a nice thick layer of paint. Around each leaf. And I'm kind of, I'm going to change up the colors I'm using. Again, I want thick watercolor. So really, I'm kind of just tracing the leaves. And it's okay if it's messy. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just another art, artsy technique for your journal. Probably easier to do outside of the journal and then paste it in later. But I've got to add some more green up here. And some people, they really slap the paint on and then let their leaf, 
let the leaves dry right on top of the sheet um like overnight you can do that or you can just pull it off and see what happens i think i'm just gonna pull it off and see what happens i'm going for more of a general impression of the leaf not as accurate a print as it is to paint right on it and then i'm going to go down the stem here just like that then I'm going to take my leaf off. That's pretty cool. So I've got this impression of the leaves. And now, after I've done that part, I'm just going to take plain water, set it on my, where I've already painted, and wash outwards. So it's probably hard to see in the video, but I'm doing a gentle wash out to make a really kind of cool washed out background for my paper here. You're pulling the paint away from the thick spots and lightening it up. So if you're going to use multiple colors like I did, like I did blue and green, think about how your colors relate to each other. Um, complementary colors are kind of, would be kind of cool, but I'm kind of staying in the same color family here with the cool blues and cool greens. But you just use plain water to wash the color out. So the thicker you put that paint on around the leaves to begin with, the more color you'll have to spread out. Um, Really so it's kind of a reverse print. You can see where my leaves were, and you can see my nice watercolor wash. Um, but that's really fun, and we can just let it dry overnight, and it'll have another neat piece of plates into our journal. So I hope you go ahead and try these different techniques. Um, to create something to put into your journal. Uh, it's really fun actually to do the watercolor leaf prints. Um, but the bark rubbings are fun too and kind of a neat way to explore nature and look for cool textures. I hope you all get the chance to uh, continue to explore nature and get outside and work on your journal. Um, go ahead and try these techniques or anything else you can think of. Experiment with those watercolors. And we'll see you next time. Bye.